Hey everyone, this is Julia. I'm the librarian at the Goleta Valley Center of Girls Inc. And I just wanted to let you know that even if we haven't met yet, I would love to chat with you about books anytime, no matter what level you're at. We have some great young adult books in the library, and I can also help you find books, stories, and poetry other places too. Whether you like to read physical books or listen to audiobooks, which you can sometimes find for free on YouTube, Reading engages our imagination and unlocks our creativity in unique ways. When you watch TV or movies, every image is created for you, so your brain really isn't doing much. When you read or listen to a story, though, your brain gets to create its own images, which exercises our imagination. Also, books record so many amazing stories and experiences that people have written about throughout history. By reading these stories, we absorb their wisdom about how to live and how to express ourselves. A great example of a book that shares wisdom from the past is a book called Brown Girl Dreaming. This is a memoir by an African-American author named Jacqueline Woodson. In case you're wondering, a memoir is a book that tells stories and memories from the author's own life. Jacqueline Woodson wrote this book in free verse, which means each chapter is a poem, but a loosely structured one. Jacqueline's story begins in Ohio in 1963, where she was born, though she says she has stories of South Carolina running like rivers through her veins because her grandparents were slaves there. In 1963, laws were still very harsh toward black people, especially in South Carolina. Jacqueline Woodson said she wrote this book to learn more about herself and her family. Just like Jacqueline, each of our lives contains many stories whether we choose to write them down, tell them out loud, or just live them throughout our life. For now, I'll read just one chapter from Jacqueline's memoir. In this chapter, young Jacqueline starts to believe she can become a writer. She learns that revolution is not needed only for her African-American brothers and sisters, but for women too. Writing her own story is itself an act of revolution. A writer. You're a writer, Ms. Vivo says, her gray eyes bright behind thin wire frames. Her smile bigger than anything, so I smile back, happy to hear these words from a teacher's mouth. She is a feminist, she tells us, and 30 fifth grade hands bend into desks where our dictionaries wait to open yet another world to us. Ms. Vivo pauses, watches our fingers fly. Webster's has our answers. Equal rights, a boy named Andrew yells out, for women. My hands freeze on the thin white pages. Like blacks, Ms. Vivo too is part of a revolution. But right now, that revolution is so far away from me. This moment, this here, this right now is my teacher saying, you're a writer. As she holds the poem, I am just beginning. The first four lines stolen from my sister. Black brothers, black sisters, all of them were great. No fear, no fright, but a willingness to fight. You can have them, Dell said when she saw. I don't want to be a poet. And then my own pencil moving late into the evening. In big fine houses lived the whites. In little old shacks lived the blacks. But the blacks were smart. In fear, they took no part. One of them was Martin with a heart of gold. You're a writer, Ms. Vivo says, holding my poem out to me. And standing in front of the class, taking my poem from her, my voice shakes as I recite the first line. Black brothers, black sisters, all of them were great. But my voice grows stronger with each word because more than anything else in the world, I want to believe her.